Welcome to the California Seed Bank. So this is the largest seed bank dedicated to California native plants. And the idea here is that you, if you process and store seeds correctly, they can remain alive in storage for potentially hundreds of years. So really this is a safety net against species extinction in the wild. So we have botanists here at the California Botanic Garden who go all over California making seed collections to add to the seed bank. Um, we're really prioritizing the rarest plants of California, trying to get those seeds secured before something happens to them in the wild. And then we process the seeds, store them in these freezers, and in the future, you know, if something happens to those populations in the wild, we can pull seeds from the freezers and, you know, maybe bring species back from the brink of extinction. So I'm going to take you on a little tour of the seed bank and show you how we do our work. So this is the seed processing room. Um, usually when collections come to us, they are mixed with excess plant material, you know, leaves and stems, fruit parts, and we want to process all of that out before we store the seeds. Um, so we can do that using these soil sieves um, to separate seeds from plant material by size. And then we have our seed aspirator units um, where we can separate seeds from plant material by weight. So we also have a research associate at the garden who takes photos of all of our seed collections. And it's actually this great resource to have a catalog of what the seeds of all these species are supposed to look like. Um, and not to mention they're just beautiful. You know, sometimes seeds can look just like generic brown spots in your hand, but then when you look at them up close, they just have all of these, you know, unique details and they're, they're just amazing. So once the seeds are processed, uh, down to pure seed, we'll bring them in here and dry them in these drying tanks. And then we package them in sealed containers and put them in our freezers. And that's pretty much all it takes. Um, the seeds will remain alive and dormant in, in the seed bank until we need to use them. And then the other thing we do here um, is we do germination testing on our seeds. Um, so we do this to get uh, an idea of how viable the seeds are to begin with. We'll sow a sample of seeds on agar, um, and we'll see how many germinate. And so we'll do that uh, initially to get a baseline viability, but then we also do follow-up testing um, throughout the storage period to make sure that the seeds are staying alive in storage. And then the other thing that these tests allow us to do is experiment with different pretreatments for germinating seeds. Because some California native plants are really hard to grow, and they have this inherent dormancy that's actually, that's actually a really great adaptation to have, right? There's this adaptation where seeds can remain alive and dormant in the soil seed bank until they experience the right ecological conditions, right? The, seeds, the plants wouldn't want their seeds to germinate um, during unsuitable conditions when the probability of seedling survival would be low. So they can stay dormant and wait for the right conditions to germinate. But in the lab, trying to grow these plants we have to sometimes trick the seeds into experiencing what they might experience in the wild in order to get them to germinate. And that can be totally different for different species. So it's a lot of experimenting. You know, some plants uh, need to have their seed coats clipped um, so that water can get in and they'll germinate. Some plants um, like to have a cold period followed by a warming event before they'll germinate and so I'll actually stick these plates in the refrigerator. Um, and some plants in California are adapted to fire. And one of the ways that they can be adapted to fire is that they actually require coming contact with smoke in order to germinate. And so in the lab, we can trick them into germinating by soaking them in diluted liquid smoke. So this is the same stuff you would use to, you know, put in barbecue sauce, or you can buy this in the grocery store, but this actually has those same molecules that are found in smoke, and so we can trick our seeds into germinating by essentially slathering them in barbecue sauce. And all of the information that we're gathering from these germination tests is really important because in the future, if we need to use these seed collections to reintroduce a plant in the wild, we're going to need to know how to grow it from seed. So our goal here is to seed bank every California native plant species. And that's a really ambitious goal. And California is a biodiversity hotspot. We have over 6,500 native plant species. Um, so we really have our work cut out for us. Uh, we have about 35% uh, of the species seed banked so far. And we're really prioritizing the rarest plants of California, you know, trying to get those species seed banked before something happens to them in the wild. And luckily, we're not alone in this endeavor. So we actually have a formal collaboration called the California Plant Rescue with other seed banking institutions in the state. And so together, we are going to seed bank the rest of the rare plants of California.